Hi everyone, welcome to our weekly demo series where we help you explore the possibilities of AI and ML with Ketonic AI. In this demo, we'll dive into a fascinating use case of customer churn prediction. As every manager knows that customer retention is the key to a business's long-term success. We'll start by introducing ourselves and provide a brief overview of our business and services. We'll discuss MLOps and why it is important for your business. Then we'll dive into an interesting and real world use case of customer churn prediction, which will be followed by Ketonic.ai's platform demo and a question and answer session with Vinay. So without further ado, today we have Vinay with us who will be leading the demo. He brings a wealth of experience in data science and machine learning and has been instrumental in the development and deployment of models on our platform. We are very excited for him to share his experience for you. Over to you, Vinay. Yeah, thank you, Pratsi, for the beautiful introduction. So, hi guys, uh, myself, Vinay. So, currently I'm working as a uh, senior data scientist at Ketonic. So without wasting any time, uh, let's start with the demo, I guess. So before directly jumping into uh, what Ketonic do, I'll just give a quick introduction on what is Ketonic and we, why we came into existence and what are the challenges that we are uh, trying to solve in the AI industry. So uh, Ketonic is a uh, unified platform uh, which will be able to uh, operationalize AI at scale. So what I mean by scaling is, uh, so there is a gap in between uh, what can I say stakeholders uh, right from uh, data engineers, data scientists and data analysts and MLOps engineer. So all these persons uh, need to join uh, at a specific uh, what can I say environment in order to deploy any AI model into production. So but there is a gap in between uh, model training and model deployment. Because the data scientist uh, will train and build up the models, uh, but an ML engineer uh, need to deploy the model. But uh, the real challenge is uh, a model that is trained by data scientists uh, can be give, hand over to uh, MLOps engineers who will develop the model. But also they need to uh, configure all the runtime environment, all the dependencies, packages that the model require. So in order to achieve, overcome this issue, uh, Ketonic provides a collaborative platform where all your uh, data scientists, data analysts, uh, machine learning engineers uh, can work in a single place. So this is uh, what exactly Ketonic will do. And uh, as I have mentioned, uh, we have uh, started in 2020 in Corona period. Uh, we achieved around, uh, I could say, uh, 10 plus customers and two, pay two patents. And we are uh, completely backed by Australian startups and also Microsoft for startups. And within the two years of span, uh, we are able to achieve some of the best results uh, in the uh, AI industry. As you could see, we are uh, able to get our place in Everest Group Peak Metrics, uh, which is nothing but uh, a survey which will done on all the machine learning operation platforms. So we are able to uh, get some market impact as well as visibility and capability. Uh, in the AI market. And also recently we got uh, our entrepreneurial company of the hour uh, by Frost and Sullivan. Uh, this happened uh, recently, I think uh, one week or two weeks ago. Apart from that, uh, we do have our uh, ComSnet award for the best product demo 2022. And we are also uh, a part of Microsoft for startups. So this is uh, a brief about uh, all the achievements and what Ketonic AI will do. Uh, so directly I'll give you the introduction or uh, the in, what can I say the brief understanding like, like uh, what MLOps platform or Ketonic MLOps platform will do. So as you could see, uh, any AI model lifecycle or any uh, AI model use case uh, will involve a couple of stakeholders, uh, right from data engineers, data scientists, uh, data analysts, and some uh, other business guys. But the problem is uh, each and individual person will work on their own environment. So for example, if I take uh, data engineers, uh, they will majorly play around with the data. They will try to clean up with the data. They will try to fetch the data into different, different sources. And then uh, there comes the data scientist who will utilize this particular data in order to solve a business problem. And also ML engineers uh, who will try to take the a model which is trained by data scientists and they will put the model into production. So there is so much of uh, silos uh, which is running uh, in a single what can I say, organization, 
because everybody is working in on their individual, but they don't have any specific uh, area where they could collaboratively uh, do all their work. So for that purpose, uh, we bring in Ketonic MLOps platform. Uh, this is where uh, all your uh, stakeholders can work in a single place and solve the machine learning or ML AI challenges. So for that, uh, if I could see, uh, there is certain components, some technicalities I could say. Uh, so as a data engineers, uh, they require data sources. So for that purpose, uh, Ketonic provides around 75 plus uh, so, uh, connectors, uh, which we could use uh, as a data loaders. Uh, for suppose if your data is uh, lying in uh, MySQL database or MongoDB or S3 buckets or something like that, if you want to fetch any data, Ketunic provides you some data sources. By using them, you can fetch the data. And for the data scientist, we provide uh, different different IDs. Uh, IDs are nothing but the workspaces where a data scientist will work and try to build some models. And also for the deployment, uh, we do have our own deployment section. Uh, by using that particular deployment, you can easily able to deploy your model within a just click of buttons. And also we are completely a cloud agnostic platform. Uh, we are able to deploy any model uh, or any, uh, what can I say, application in AWS Azure on Google Cloud. If you have any particular on-premise servers, uh, which are nothing but some machines that are provided by uh, local vendors or someone by data centers, you could also able to uh, deploy this platform on the on-premise servers. So this is about uh, Ketonic uh, platform in brief. Uh, but uh, what exactly the key features that we are uh, currently delivering to our customers is uh, we will try to deliver the models uh, 12x faster. I'll say 12 times faster. Uh, uh, in general, a machine learning engineer should able to create the particular production environment in order to deploy any machine learning model. But in the platform, in the Ketunic platform, you are able to do it by yourself uh, within a click of button. And also not only deployment, you can also need to monitor your uh, model continuously because machine learning models or data science models are pretty much, uh, what can I say, sense to to data. So by the, hum uh, just like the human behavior changes, uh, like the model behavior also changes. If I could take an example as uh, before pandemic or after pandemic, before pandemic, there are so many people uh, who is able to choose uh, public transportation for their travel uh, purposes. But right now, most of the people are preferring their own individual personal vehicles instead of going for the public transportation. So by this way, human life has changed. That means the data that we are getting from our users or our customers will also change that impact the model. So we need to understand these changes and we will try to monitor whether our model is performing better or not. Or uh, then uh, if we are able to see any changes in the performance, we need to re retrain the model and we need to deploy the model again. And also one more thing is uh, the platform is completely completely secure. Uh, if you hand it over to your, the platform, all the things that you are currently doing right from your data models, everything will stay in one place, uh, will completely hand, handled by you. You will get the visibility, you will get the authorization uh, in order to use those components. And also it is not like you need to send your data to some platform and train your model over there. Instead of that, you will get the complete host uh, where your model can get trained, your data will get stored. And also the platform is completely scalable. Uh, the scalable, uh, what I mean is, uh, it is completely built on top of one of the latest technology called Kubernetes. Uh, this is a pretty much, I could say, an elastic services, serverless service. Uh, so whenever you are able to uh, uh, increase the load, on top of your model or else you want to do some uh, high level pre-processing steps for the videos or any audios, the platform will automatically increase the resources based on your need. So by that way, we are able to uh, achieve the scalability. So these are some of the key features uh, that we are currently offering. And also we are targeting uh, two different types of audience because uh, as I know, there are two types of people who will uh, pretty much like the coding and facing the challenges and logics. But there are some other people who don't like uh, that much coding, but they want to use some drag and drop components, uh, a GUI type interface uh, where they can choose some options or some drop downs, uh, and they want to create some pipelines. So that is one type of audience. And the other person is completely data scientist who love and chew the code. I could say uh, they are pretty much familiar with notebooks, different, different codes, 
languages i could say python uh, julia or something etc like so for those two type of audience the platform is best suitable i would say so and also uh, the main impact of uh, using ketonic keys as i have previously mentioned the model deployments will get done uh, uh, at a rate of 12 times faster i would say it was completely uh, uh, auto scalable and also retrainable deployments and also you don't need to keep your data scientist or machine learning engineers in place uh, in order to create or deploy these models or pipelines because we do have all the automation where you can create a pipeline for one time and you can keep it in a recurring run or you can schedule it whenever you want to run by this way you are able to reduce your labor manual work and also uh, i would say since we are using some of the uh, latest technologies like auto scaling and scalability the infrastructure cost uh, will also get reduced by seven uh, seven times i would say because uh, the platform is designed in such a way that uh, whenever you want to do some utilization then only the resources will get used if you are not making any utilization or not using any of your models or any of your workspaces the resources will get scaled down uh, because of the scalability thanks for the scalability and kubernetes so that's how uh, the data sense workload will get distributed and managed and also uh, yeah uh, let's come into the use case uh, so this is all about the ketonic platform so let's talk about the use case uh, the use case that i am uh, currently uh, going to uh, explain is about customer chain so this customer chain is not completely related to any specific domain uh, you could take banking you could take retail you could take e-commerce so everywhere there is a need of customer there, there is a need of uh, the business i would say you if you want to keep your customer with you for a long period you need to uh, reduce the churn rate what is the meaning of churn rate is the uh, what can i say the ratio of uh, customers leaving the particular service uh, uh, i would say uh, example as a bank so a bank consists of some a persons who will take the loans or some persons who will make the daily transactions or some persons who just have their accounts that's it but if you keep uh, the customers with you for the longer period or you will get the best profits so for understanding the customer behavior uh, we need to use some of the latest machine learning technologies and some analytical capabilities in order to understand whether the customer is going to leave our bank or not or else in any customer or any service uh, whether our uh, customer is going to leave our service whether it was a application service or retail service anything like that. so in general uh, we are going to discuss about customer chain uh, how we can predict a customer's behavior based on some of the data that is provided by the customer so uh, for example uh, we will take a bank imaginary bank called data bank uh, which is running for around last 20 to 30 years uh, it successfully gained the customer trust and their uh, the customers all over feel secure uh, in order to invest or having their accounts in this particular bank but right now what happened is uh, by the 20th century is getting into uh, 21st century the most of the uh, digital revolution has started most of the bank, uh, banks are completely digitalized uh, on like previous days uh, nobody is uh, working running around or roaming around with papers like some challenge or some scripts uh, they are completely digitalized they are just using some mobile application net banking credit card debit cards so right now they want to move into the digitalization part so they have uh, uh, assigned a head of data analytics who will uh, right now able to check uh, why the customers are leaving their particular bank because he was not able to understand just by looking at the data because he got tons and tons of data from various sources he was not able to understand so he was, he was uh, completely worried like what i need to do so what he has done is uh, he uh, hired some data scientists and some machine learning engineers who will try to analyze the customer performance or customer behavior who are leaving the bank and they need to predict before they are leaving the bank so the data scientist will do they will try to run some models develop some models on the customer's data and they will try to predict uh, this customer has a chance of 80% uh, probability of leaving the bank or else this customer has around 95% uh, of probability to leave the bank so when we are able to know these insights from the data uh, what we will do is we will try to take the precautionary actions just like providing some uh, personalized offers uh, to the particular customer or giving them some a uh, credit amount increased previously if he was getting around 1 lakh of credit amount we can increase the amount to 2 lakhs 
or else we can provide some uh, beautiful uh, some uh, best loans that the customers could expect. So we are able to uh, take this precautionary ac actions when we are able to know that this customer is going to leave. So that's how uh, these machine learning uh, models that we are going to train will work. And also uh, the main thing uh, while training any model is creating features. Creating features, what I mean is, so uh, any business or any service will have only raw data, whether it was a customer name, customer gender, or some of his demographic details, like from which area he belongs to or which city he lives in, and also some of the property details, like where the particular customer is located in and what type of uh, house he owned, whether it was a own house or rented house, something like that. By using these details, uh, we need to predict or we need to uh, get the ab uh, ability to predict whether the customer is going to leave or bank or. So uh, at the end, the outcome of this particular uh, process is just some probability, whether the pro uh, chances of a customer is leaving uh, high or low or medium. So based on our uh, comfortability or convenience, we can defend the different different zones. But before doing that, we need to have something called as features. The features are nothing but uh, I could say the input points uh, which the ML model will take and based on those input points, it will try to make the predictions whether the uh, customer is going to churn or not. But in order to create these features, we need data scientists uh, who will try to uh, use those raw data, the data that we have defined over here, uh, demographic data, account information, and property details. They will try to use this particular data and they will uh, do some approaches. I could say some processes uh, like transformation, different, different transformation, because uh, as we know that, the computer doesn't understand any alphabets or any words. It will simply understand numbers or zeros and ones, we could say simply bind binaries. So in order to convert this raw data into that particular feature, we need to do some different different techniques like transformation, contextual features, and augmenting the features, and also pre-computing the features. This is nothing but uh, just a pre-processing step, uh, which will come right before the model training. Uh, we call it as feature <coughs> engineering. So uh, just after that, uh, the model life cycle will start. The model life cycle in the sense, the trading of the model will start. So as we see here, uh, anything or uh, I, I will say any a model life cycle will start with offline data. So uh, as we have uh, previously seen some of the details like demographic data, personal data, this comes as offline data. From there, we will try to uh, do the experimentation and prototyping. Uh, this step uh, consists of so many uh, different different processes, right from understanding the problem definition and selecting the particular data because uh, whether the data is going to be useful uh, in order to predict the customer behavior or not. And also we need to explore the data, like how the data is and what are the uh, areas that we are uh, lacking because of the particular areas the customers are living. We need to understand all of these things by exploring the data. And also, as I have mentioned, feature engineering, and then we will try to do the uh, model training stuff. This is nothing but model prototype. So after doing these things, uh, at the end, we will get a model. And also, we will get some of the metrics, uh, or else I could say some of the artifacts. Uh, we will get right after uh, experimentation and prototyping. Those are nothing but metrics. Uh, these metrics can be performance metrics, like how the model is performing on the given data. <clears throat> and also some of the parameters. Like every model uh, requires some of the parameters. Uh, we call them as hyperparameters in data science term. Uh, we also need to log all of these things, right? Like metrics, parameters, artifacts. Artifacts are nothing but the models, the model physical files, because at the end, model is a simple um, binary code, right? So we also need to log all of these things in order to use this experiment or this model for the production. But what we will do is uh, right after uh, defining all these sections and completed with the experiment tracking, we will push all this code into a source repository uh, with any type of DVC data version controls like GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, anything, or if you have any local servers, you can push your code over there into a source repository. From there, by using this code uh, that we have defined previously in order to train the model, we will create an automated pipeline. Which consists of the same steps uh, that we have done in, uh, in the experimentation tracking or the prototyping section. But these things will run automatically because uh, we, we want to keep this thing as reusable. 
because uh, as we know that a data science life cycle or uh, life cycle ends does, doesn't end with model training because we need to keep monitoring the particular model if we uh, find any uh, model degradation we need to retrain the model with the latest data but we don't want to do these things redundant things again and again for this purpose we will create automated pipelines what this automated pipeline will do is uh, they will try to get the data from the real uh, world data sources like any sas db data warehouse on any external systems they will pick the data uh, for that uh, we will use connectors data connectors or data loaders uh, ketonic uh, as i have mentioned ketonic provides around 70 plus different different connectors uh, any type of database or any type of firewalls you can simply connect the uh, source and you can get the data and you can feed that particular data into your automated pipeline so uh, previously what we have done is we have manually fetched the data offline data and we we have done the prototyping uh, we have created the pipeline but now we will try to make this thing completely automated uh, we will fetch the data from different different sources by using connectors or uh, we will give that particular data to this automated pipeline and then we will get the model but once we got the best model we also need to have a have a place or a repository where our our models could get stored because sometimes we need to make versions of these models because sometimes a model will work perfectly but uh, on on the time go uh, the model performance may get degraded in that time we need to have some other model in a standby mode where we can uh, do some testing on top of it and we can directly push the model to the production so for that purpose uh, we do have the model registry from that model registry we will deploy the model any machine learning model but after deploying model uh, there there is a question like how can i consume this model because at the end model is a pickle file uh, you you uh, deployed that particular pickle file all the binary file but how can i consume this pickle file or or the this particular model in order to improve my business because uh, the ai ai hype is very much but the advantage of taking this ai and making your uh, and, and enhancing your uh, business is pretty much a essential part because uh, i have I deployed this model but i am not doing anything uh, it was completely a waste so there are couple of options uh, how to consume this particular model one is the model api the model api is nothing but a endpoint uh, which we can integrate in our application in order to uh, understand or uh, enhance our business and one more thing is the web application web applications are nothing but uh, if you want to embed this particular api uh, into any of your application whether it was android ios or web application the model will get consumed on real time uh, for example uh, i'll take it as netflix so if netflix want to recommend uh, image sorry um, uh, movies or any series to any particular user or any viewer it needs to have a recommendation system uh, placed in the back end but the recommendation system has to be consumed by the application because while i was interacting with the app with the netflix app i need to get the recommendations in real time so for that purpose uh, we need to embed our deployed model our recommendation model into the application then it will work uh, as expected in real time and also one more option is batch inferences because uh, some there are some challenges or sometimes uh, we need to accumulate the data for uh, one day or two days or one week then we want to run this complete uh, model on top of those data in order to get the predictions <clears throat> for one time in in uh, in a particular time period but the a model life cycle doesn't end over here because training uh, deploying the model is one part and also monitoring the model and retraining the model is the second part uh, in this way uh, we need to keep our model life cycle uh, in in a continuous loop Uh, we will train the model with the automated pipelines. Uh, we will deploy the model. We will continuously check the performance monitoring of the model, and this monitoring also can be from two perspective. One is from the resource perspective, and other other from is the model performance perspective. The resource perspective is nothing but uh, I have deployed the model in particular infrastructure in certain infrastructure, but based on my uh, user uh, request or user hits, uh, my model uh, doesn't able to give the expected predictions. because the infrastructure that we have provided for the deployment is not sufficient enough for the model to handle this much of traffic user traffic that is one type of monitoring and the other one is the performance monitoring performance monitoring is nothing but uh, for example if i uh, take a model as classification model 
there are several, several metrics or several KPIs uh, which I need to keep my eye on uh, in order to check the model performance. Uh, for example, for the classification, I'll take it as uh, accuracy score, F1 score or recall score. So by these, by taking these things uh, as a KPI, I will try to monitor my model continuously. If I try to uh, able to figure out uh, any degradation or any, what can I say, uh, model performance is getting low, I will try to trigger the uh, pipeline that I have created previously. Uh, it will trigger the automated pipeline and I'll get the best model as expected because it was using the same automated pipeline uh, while we are training the uh, model. Uh, we will move the model into registry from there we will deploy the model this will be a continuous loop and we don't need to involve manually all these things can be done automatically uh, right from model deployment monitoring and triggering the pipeline automatically so this is how a uh, typical a model life cycle will look like um prachi do we have any questions in the chat hi Vinay. i do not think so if that we have any questions from my end but i'll pass on the stage to our attendees so if anybody has any questions the stage is all yours Vinay would be happy to answer your queries We'll wait for another 30 seconds. You can type in your queries in the chat box or raise your hand so we can uh, promote you to a speaker. Yeah, sure. I believe Nitin has a query. Nitin has promoted you to a speaker. You can unmute yourself and ask away. Hi, Nitin. Am I audible to you? You can unmute yourself now and ask your question to Vinay. Yeah, so Vinay, you talked about consumption of the uh, inferences through these three models, the three ways. One is yes. your uh, REST APIs then uh, through your web application and through the BI tool. Now, we also have that superset uh, which is Apache uh, open source tool. I think yes, you should sir. also make a mention of that because uh, that also will create some kind of a, uh, this thing that those who would like to get the platform end to end with the uh, uh visualization capability i think that would be a better uh for this yes, yes point yes. point to mention yeah yeah got it perfect Vinay, would you want to add anything to what nathan has mentioned yes i i will show that particular component uh, which nathan mentioned the superset model i'll show it in the demo Perfect. I think there are no more questions from our audience coming away. We can please move ahead with the demo, Vinay. Mm, yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Nitin, for the suggestion. Yeah, I'll take into consideration. Yeah, so from now on, uh, I'll just reshare my screen. Yeah, so uh, this is the Ketunic platform we look like. And this was the initial dashboard. Uh, once you, you log into the dashboard, this is the first interface that you are going to look at. To. And this contains some of the uh, recent workspaces details, uh, like what are the previous workspaces that you have worked on, and also the recent pipelines that you have created, and also some of the pipeline runs. And this dashboard also contains a knowledge center, get a knowledge center on which you can raise any of your tickets, any of your queries. And also it contains a documentation for the entire platform. And also we do have the SDK documentation because uh, Ketonic has developed their own package, uh, Ketonic package, which will help you in your uh, entire AI model lifecycle, right from data extraction with different different data loaders uh, till uh, model deployment, model monitoring. And if you are able to detect any drift in your model, the package will help you to understand the uh, drift and all. And also we do have uh, uh, a MLOps course, uh, which is available in the Udemy, which is a short course of uh, four to five lectures. Uh, just to help you or uh, to understand what are all the typical AM, uh, MLOps keywords and all the jargon words that you are uh, you are going to learn. 
So uh, and from here, I'll just move into one of the component which we have de uh, developed, uh, which is nothing but the accelerators. So if I click on this accelerators, uh, it will show me some of the uh, industry grade. Just a second, let me open the categories. So if you could see, there are different different domains, uh, right from airlines, healthcare, manufacturing, and also from transportation. So what our team has done is we have developed these pre-built use cases. Uh, which are completely uh, developed by our data science team. Uh, they pick up the use case from the market and they have done some research R&D on top of it. They try to extract the data, pull the data from different different sources and they build a use case. So right now we are going to look into the customer chain use case. Uh, for that, I'll go into the banking and financial services. From here, I could see bank customer chain prediction. So this is one of the application that our uh, data science team has built. You could see some of the details about the use case, like what exactly uh, bank customer chain is. And if you want to play around with that uh, notebook or with the data, uh, you can click on the launch notebook. It will redirect you to a page, GitHub page, where all the code will uh, be visible. And if you want to play around with the code, you can simply download this code and you can start using your, um, your data, uh, feed the data, and you can follow the steps which we have defined over there. And also we do give you a sample application uh, because as I would say, a data scientist and a business and marketing languages can be different because data scientists will only understand majorly uh, the code, the different different languages and what can I say, machine learning models and all. But from the perspective of a business guy, they want to understand the business, like how this model is going to affect my business. So for that purposes, what we have done is uh, we have created a web application which includes this model in the back end and will give you the predictions to the market guy or the business guy. So for that purpose, if I click on the launch app, it will give me a uh, application uh, where my entire code in the entire uh, application and the model will exist. But before going to, into that, I'll show you the notebook like how the code and how the uh, data engineering and EDS stuffs will look like. So this is the sample notebook. So like this, we do have around 200 plus different different use cases. Uh, in the accelerator section, you could see uh, there are the number of uh, domains and different different services. And also right coming to the application, you could see this is the bank customer churn prediction app. Uh, you could see the sample data, how the data will look like. And also these are some of the ADS steps uh, that you could follow uh, in order to create your own model or own application. You can follow these steps. Uh, this gives you an idea like you don't have to start from the scratch because uh, you are living in 2023, but you are still sta starting your data science journey from a scratch. Uh, there, there might be something wrong with your approach, I guess. Because there are so many, uh, what can I say, communities or so much of stuff that is uh, available in the internet. Uh, you can take them as a reference or you can directly use the ketonic accelerators and you can start using your uh, data science project. So in this application, you could see we do have the some of the input parameters. So if I could change some of the score like a credit score to something and the customer age is around 50 and if I want to choose some of the number of the products and at the end if I click on the prediction uh, in the back end it will use the machine learning model uh, that we, are, we have deployed previously and it will give me an idea like whether this particular uh, customer is going to churn or not. If he was not going to churn uh, it will give me the probability like there is 30% uh, of chance that this person is not going to be exited from the bank. So this is uh, how the accelerators are made for. Uh, and also uh, you could use in the entire code. Uh, you could see different different feature engineering stuff and all uh, from the GitHub. You can use all of them. But right, come back into the platform. Uh, as I have mentioned in, in the AI model lifecycle, every data science use case or data science journey will start with the data. So for the data purpose or for the uh, data loader purpose, loading purpose, we do have the connectors. So if I click on the connectors, uh, it will point out me to a particular page where all my previous connections have been made. So you could see I have given a connection for Google Analytics. So this will take the data from Google Analytics data and it will put into my file manager. This file manager is nothing but uh, Ketonic has an individual data warehouse, uh, which is called as Ketonic file manager. So by using that particular connector that I have shown you before, I am getting the data from Google Analytics to my particular platform. 
So this is how easy you can uh, fetch the data or load the data from different different sources. If I want to show you what are the available sources, I'll go to the sources section. I'll click on new source. Uh, if I click simply drop down from this uh, UI, I could see n number of different different uh, sources. If I want to fetch my data from Postgres, I'll type in Postgres. Yeah, there you go. You, you, you got the Postgres connector. You can simply connect uh, to the particular uh, what can I say source and fetch your data. If I want to get my data from any MySQL database, yeah, I could do that. You name it, uh, whatever the database that you currently had in which your data exists, you can connect to that particular source and you can uh, get your data into the platform. And also one more thing is these uh, connectors that you are uh, currently looking at, they also be run in automated manner. If I go to the uh, any particular connector and if I get into the replication stage, you could see the replication frequency over here because if I want to run this particular connector for every two hours because my database or my source is updating in every two hours, I want to get the data automatically. Automatically, I can simply create a connection like this, uh, this tab like I have shown you before, and you can select your time period or the replication frequency. So based on your need, and the date, the this connection will run at the specified time, and it will bring the data from the source and it will dump into your destination. So this could be done automatically. So by using this thing, uh, one of your major challenge like fetching the data uh, and, and using different different connectors to fetch the data is solved. But right after getting the data, we need to start with the experimentation. But experimentation is nothing but uh, I would say um, doing the feature engineering, model training, analyzing the data, how the data is, uh, are there any null values in the particular data or any misspelled values like this? So for that, uh, a data scientist need a workspace, uh, their own individual uh, preferred workspace. So for that purpose, uh, we do have the option called workspaces. So you could see there are uh, previous workspaces that I have run. Uh, if I want to create one more workspace, I'll click on create a workspace option. I'll give a name. Right now I am going to give a name as Bang Shun Prediction. And from that, uh, you can choose your uh, preferred environment, uh, whether it was a Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, VS Code, R Studio. If you are pretty much comfortable with R, you can choose the R Studio. And also, we do have one more component called Ketmix Studio, which gives you a power uh, to simply drag and drop your existing code, uh, whether it was your code in uh, Jupyter Notebooks or in Python files or in all files. <clears throat> this Ketmix Studio will give you the capability to create a pipeline out of those files. So this is uh, pretty much uh, useful for the uh, low code to no code approach. But right now I am going to go with the Jupyter Lab because I am pretty much familiar with Jupyter Lab. And also I'll choose my images uh, because you could see uh, setting up an environment uh, like for TensorFlow or PyTorch is pretty much difficult because you need to configure so many parameters uh, like the torch parameters or I could say some of the GPU parameters. It's pretty much difficult for a data scientist. So uh, I would say uh, if you can click on any of this image, uh, most of the configuration that you need, uh, all, all the uh, I, I would say parameters uh, or the different different GPU settings can be uh, come as a built in parameters or a, or a built in approach. You can simply click on the TensorFlow. Uh, it will make all the different different configuration that your TensorFlow environment need and it will create the workspace. And also one more thing is you need to choose the resources because nowadays, uh, nowadays resources have become pretty much uh, expensive. Uh, if I want to choose any ex um, cloud resources, uh, they, they will charge you for hourly and they are charging in, in thousands of dollars. So for that purpose, you can control your, uh, I, I would say resources also. But for this purpose, I am only going with the large model because uh, this thing will be enough for my particular use case. So I'll click on create or uh, the workspace will get created within a two to three minutes. By this way, uh, a data scientist, if a, if, a want, if a person or if a data scientist want to start with their data science journey, they don't even need to have a laptop uh, or they don't need to set up any different, different, uh, I would say, environments, Jupyter environments or any VS Code environments. They can simply come over here. They will choose different, different parameters. And within a couple of minutes, uh, this workspace will get created and he can use uh, as ever he want. So right now I'm not going to create one more workspace because I already have many. So I'll simply connect to one of the workspace that I have previously created. Uh, let's go with the test workspace. I'll click on the connect button. 
So it will redirect me to a page. But meanwhile, I'll show you some of the details over here. And while the workspace is running, uh, we could also see like uh, how much of memory that I have provided and what is the CPU size and how many days before I have created this workspace. And also I could check the logs. And if uh, at the end, if I don't want to use this workspace anymore, I can simply delete this workspace. So right now, this is our workspace uh, which I have previously started. You could see uh, there are some of the previous work the, that I have done. I could see some of the bank customer CSV files, some of the HTML files and notebook files. So, but if I want to create a pipeline, an automated pipeline out of these features, I'll go to an option called new launcher. From there, I'll choose the pipeline editor. This pipeline editor is nothing but a beautiful canvas. I would say you can simply draw how your pipeline should look like and after which step, which step needs to be run and what are the parameters your individual uh, pipeline step needed. So I'll simply drag and drop a couple of uh, notebooks. I'd say uh, just get into some components. Or else we can directly uh, drag and drop some of the sample notebooks. I know they, they, they don't work because I'm not making all the parameters correctly. So I could see uh, right now I have uh, created two different different notebooks uh, as a data scientist. One is for the meta output and input and the other one is for the target transformation. But also if I want to add some of the Python files, uh, if I simply drag and drop over here. And if I have some data scientists who are working in R language, I'll simply drag and drop one more component over here and I'll choose uh, the preferred uh, Python file uh, by simply clicking on it and getting into the open panel section. From here, I can choose the particular file that I need to uh, add in my pipeline. So if I click on it, it will browse. Uh, right now, I don't have any files over here. It was showing empty. But if you have any files, you can simply drag and drop over here. And then you can connect with one another like this. So right now, I, have, I am just giving up after which step, which step needs to be run. And also, if you want to uh, have any pipelines that has some dependencies over like this. So if I want to run my R script after these three steps got completed, then I will try to create a pipeline like this. Because this R script has a dependency on these three other different different uh, steps or, or I, I can say different different processes. So for that purpose, I have created a pipeline like this. And also one more thing is you can configure each and every step. Uh, if I click on this target transformation section and open panel, I could see so many parameters over here. The uh, major one is uh, runtime image because in which environment that your particular component should be run. Uh, right now I am taking it as Anaconda one and also I, need, I can configure how much of CPU, how much of RAM and if I want to do the GPU computation, I can mention all those details over here. Like uh, if I want to give it as uh, 8 GB, yeah, uh, cores of CPU and 16 GB of RAM and one GPU, I can do that. And also if you have uh, any secret keys like uh, any GitHub tokens or any S3 bucket access key secret key, but you don't want to mention all of them inside your code, but you want to provide them as an environmental variables. <clears throat> For that purpose, you can go to the additional properties, click on add, give your environmental variable name and a value. This will get attached to your uh, the runtime execution environment and they will get picked up from there. So this is how easy you can create uh, any scalable pipeline uh, by using the Ketonic platform. So right now I'm just picking up these two options, uh, pipeline steps, and I'll give a runtime image for this first step also. So right now I, I don't see any error over here, so I'll simply connect these two things. So once you have constructed your pipeline, end-to-end -end pipeline like this, uh, click on run pipeline, save and submit it, and choose the runtime configuration, click on OK. So this will take a couple of seconds in order to start your pipeline. Once your pipeline got started, uh, you could see the job submission has been successful. Then go to the uh, platform. From here, go to the pipeline section, uh, get into the runs. You could see the water of the pipeline that you have started before. You can see the pipeline over here. So right now I have started one pipeline. Uh, I didn't give a name, so this is coming as untitled but I could see the pipeline steps over here. So right now this step is currently running. I could check the logs if I want to, and also if I have any visualization, like if I want to create any graphs, I could check them from over here, but right now it was throwing some error because we haven't uh, given the configuration as expected because it was expecting some file, some meta config file, 
but I haven't provided. But I'll show you some of the pipeline which we have already ran. Yeah, th you could see uh, this pipeline has a functionality is called read data, uh, splitting the data into trading and testing uh, parts, checking for the data distribution, and then it will uh, running these five models parallelly. So you could see after data distribution got, gets completed, uh, it was passing into five different different uh, modules, uh, SVM module, KNN, CART, Random Forest. So this uh, all the model training for the five models will get completed at the same time or will start at the same time. Because uh, we don't need to wait for one model training uh, to start another model because we don't have any dependencies on individual models. So we can keep them in a parallel mode or we can train them all of them at once. And at then we will get the model evaluation. So once we got the model evaluation, we find the best model. We can uh, put the model into production. But before doing that, <clears throat> I'll show you one more option, uh, which is nothing but the file manager. So this file manager contains uh, the pipelines that we have previously created. So all the information of the pipelines will get uh, stored over here. Uh, I could see if I click on the browse, I'll say different different pipeline uh, details over here. And also the models, uh, whatever the models that you are training uh, with your pipeline or in your workspaces, they also get uh, logged over here. If I click on any of this experiment, get into artifacts, I could see there is a model called a decision tree classifier. So all of your models, uh, all of your pipelines will get stored over here uh, and they also get version. Apart from that, you will get two more buckets. Uh, one is a private bucket and the other one is a shared bucket. This private bucket is self-explanatory. Uh, if you have any sensitive data, any data that you don't want to share with your teammates, you can put down your data into private bucket. But uh, you are working in a collaborative team a team of three to four members or in a team. You want to work on a single use case collaboratively. In that case, uh, as a data scientist, if I create a model, I can simply come over here. I can dump my model over here. Other persons who is doing the model evaluation or the model deployment purposes, they can simply get this uh, file show from over here and they can use it for the, their own purposes. So this is how the data management will look like. And also, uh, if I go to any of the bucket, you could see there are a couple of models over here, so some of the files over here. But if I click on any of the file, uh, right now this has only vers one version. But by using this platform, you can also do the data versioning also. Uh, let me check any file has a couple of versions. No, I don't see any file. But what I'll do is I'll try to download this file, facebook.csv. I have downloaded this file. What I'll try to do is I'll try to upload this file one more time. Just a second, facebook.csv, yep. So right now I could see two files over here, but they got version. Because uh, as a data scientist, while I was working, uh, I need to use different different data transformation techniques because I don't know which features will provide uh, or give the best values. For that purpose, I need to do the data versioning also. So by this way, you can do the data versioning. Uh, any of your files can be versioned if you uh, try to upload the file name with file with the same name. And also uh, we, we spoke about the models right in the pipeline uh, because I have trained uh, five models simultaneously. So for that purpose, if I get into the experiment section, uh, I, I choose the, uh, what can I say, use case name. Uh, right now I'll go with some use case called default prediction. <coughs> Let, let them load. Uh, you could see there are n number of models that I have trained previously. Uh, some of them are tuned models, uh, but some of them are based models. I could see so much of uh, detail, so many information over here. Like I could see when this model got created and also who created this model, who is the user and what is the source. The source is nothing but from which notebook or which file that particular model got created and what type of model it is and the different different accuracy parameters or, or performance parameters. So for this particular model, since this was a classification model, I have different different parameters like accuracy score, F1 score, and something like that. So as a data scientist, if I am pretty much satisfied with my accuracy score, I'll simply click on it. Uh, it will automatically sort uh, all the different different models based on my need. And if I, just a second. And if I, if I get into uh, this, this section, Uh, 
yeah so i find out that this model uh, is my best model uh, but someone already deployed this model but i am going with the second model uh, which is a random forest classifier model and you could also see the different different uh, i would say uh, accuracy scores and also the parameters so these parameters are nothing but uh, we will use these parameters uh, some values in order to train our model to give the best performance so these are some of the parameters these things can also get logged but the best part about this experimentation section is you don't need to log uh, any of these uh, matrices or parameters manually so while you are trying to do the experimentation like while you are trying to train the model itself in the workspace these things can get logged automatically so once you are uh, your experimentation will get done you can click on couple of models uh, you are uh, tr uh, thinking as these are my best models you can click on compare this will give you the in, uh, entire comparison like uh, what is the run id and what is the different different parameters accuracy score and all if you want to have any graphical representation uh, to for the comparison you can choose this dif different different metrics or parameters this graph will change and you can based on these uh, calculations and interpretation you can choose your best model so just uh, so as i have mentioned so this was the first mo best model uh, that i am looking at but i'll try to uh, what can i say i'll try to deploy the second model because first model is already in production because i could able to uh, differentiate from this different icon but i'll try to do this model uh, send it into production so for that i'll try to register this model uh, first because we do need to have a model registry where our, all the models can get stored and they get version because if any model get degraded we do need to have a other model in a standby mode so that we can deploy instantly so for that purpose i'll click on register model i'll give a name as mm, bank customer chain model and then register this model so once i register this model i could see there is no uh, button for the register again and also i could see uh, just a second two of my models is in production like i have registered these two models so from this, uh, if I get into the model registry, since I have uh, registered this model, I could see my model over here, uh, like bank as much and model demo. So if I click on this, as of now, this model got only one version, but some of the models like image classification, animal image classification, this, mod, uh, this model has five different different models, but out of five models, only one model is in production. And also, if you want to do the comparison, I could do the same comparison over here. I could able to check the metrics. I could able to check the parameters. But once I satisfied with my model uh, and I want to move this model into production, I'll click on this particular version and I'll give a tag as uh, production. And also there is two more tags. Uh, one is for staging. Uh, this staging is specifically for testing by different different developers. And the other one is for the archive. So I'll take this model to production. So I'll tag it as production. So from there, after I'm tagging it as production, I'll get into the deploy section. And there are two options. One is for app deployment, other one is the model deployment. Since we are going to do the model deployment, I'll click on model deployment. I'll give a name, bank customer chain model. Uh, there are uh, also three options over here. One is the ketonic model registry, uh, which is the previous approach that we have seen. Other one is the hugging face one. Uh, we do have the hugging face models and also the custom model. This custom model is nothing but uh, if you have your own model that you have built by using uh, your own individual packages, you haven't used uh, any scikit-learn or any trans, uh, TensorFlow packages, or even if you use them, but you have customized it. In that case, if you want to deploy any model, you can use the custom model option. But right now I am going with the traditional uh, Ketonic model registry. I'll click on it. From there, I'll choose uh, whatever the model name that I have given previously. In this case, this is bank customer chain demo. And I do have only one version which I have created just now, May 5th. And I'll choose the model type. So since this is the uh, classification model, and I'll give the pod range. This pod range is nothing but how many workers uh, that you want to give to your model so that it will perform better for the predictions, for the inference. Because this will start individually four different different workers. So we can make four requests simultaneously at the same time. And also I could choose the resources like uh, how much of uh, <clears throat> uh, different different RAM and CPU that I want to give. Uh, we do have five sections over here, right from small to extra large. Uh, right now I'm going with the medium one. I'll click on deploy. This model will get deployed 
uh, within uh, two to three minutes because it needs to uh, uh, set up the entire environment that we have uh, used in order to train the model. So I'm not going to deploy one more. I'll click on cancel, but you could see there are a couple of models that I am able to see. <clears throat> uh, once the model is in running stage, uh, I could able to see the API usage, logs, monitoring options. So if I click on the monitor, uh, this will give me a dashboard. Uh, so since this was a classification dashboard, I could see some metrics like uh, real-time precision metric, uh, accuracy metric, recall metric. But if it is a regression problem or any different uh, NLP classification or any object detection model, uh, this parameter will, will get changed because these are completely dynamic. Based on your model type, this will get changed. Uh, so when you when you are able to figure out that the, my model accuracy is completely degrading, you can simply spin up the pipeline which we have previously created, and the model the new model will get trained, and they will the model will get stored in the registry. And also the the model consume options are uh, if I click on the API, there are two options as of now. One is the model predict endpoint prediction endpoint, other one is the feedback endpoint. By using these two endpoints, uh, you can consume your model. But before doing that, you need to have an API token, secure API token, because uh, whoever has this model uh, endpoint cannot able to use the model until and unless they have a particular API endpoint. So this is for the security purposes we have added over here. So if I uh, give a token for Vinay, and I'll choose some time, because Vinay has to use this particular model for only uh, till uh, 12th of May, uh, I'll click on create token. It will create a token. If I uh, give this token to Vinay, uh, Vinay will be able to uh, use this particular model for 12 days. So that's how this API token will work. And also, if you want to check how, how can I use this particular API endpoints, you can go to the API usage docs, click on view documentation. Uh, this will give you the understanding like uh, how can I use this particular uh, endpoint and how can I use this endpoint in different, different languages like Python, Java, R language, and Go language. So this is for the documentation purpose. And also uh, there is one more option called, uh, I would say logs. So these are pretty much real time logs. As of now, I'm not getting any logs because I'm not using this model. Uh, this was in idle stage. But once you feel that uh, my model deployment is done and I'm able to get the required predictions, you can also deploy or uh, delete this model by using the delete button. And apart from model deployment, uh, there is one more option called app application deployment. Uh, for that, uh, you can click on app deployment, give a name for it. Uh, if I give a name as bank customer chain, I'll choose what type of uh, application it is, whether it was a Streamlit application or Dash application, and I click on Streamlit. I'll pass my GitHub token over here, and after this, I need to uh, choose what type of repository it is, uh, and from there, you can choose your um, app file, Python version, and also same as resources. You can click on Deploy. Uh, your application will also get deployed. Uh, this is the sample application which you have previously deployed. I will show you that. So this is the different application. Uh, this is for the telecom customer chain application. So previously we are looking at bank customer chain. This is for the telecom application chain. So this is uh, the way how you can uh, use Ketonic platform in order to uh, achieve your complete AI model lifecycle. Uh, and also there is one more option uh, which is pretty much useful for the business intelligence uh, that is known as visualization. So if I click on visualize, uh, it will show me to show give me a dashboard where I could see different different uh, what can I say reports that I have previously created by using this uh, any data analyst or, <clears throat> or any marketing analyst can able to create some dashboard beautiful dashboard uh, to understand uh, their business. So uh, I think this is uh, about Ketonic I, uh, and I have covered most of the things. Uh, Rachi, we can start with the q and I guess. Yeah, two questions. Yeah. Two questions. One is that you showed the connections. So can you go to the connections? Yeah. Okay, and yes. then you showed about Postgres, correct? So yes. there is an icon called transformation. So what does that mean? So this transformation uh, is useful uh, uh, for if you want to fetch any data, but while fetching the data itself, uh, you want to uh, add any feature engineering te techniques on top of that. Because while you are getting the data, there is a column like uh, gender, male and female. 
but you don't want that column as male and female, but instead of that, you want uh, that particular feature as zeros and ones. If the value is uh, male, uh, then you need to give it as one, and the value is female, then you need, to, you need to give it as zero. So this type of transformations can also be possible uh, with the connectors. Okay, so uh, a question related to that, you also showed some features, correct, of the data. Now, is there a way by which uh, I have got additional features or my data scientist has got additional features? Can I include those features in the feature store? Yes, 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 Nitin. We could also do the same thing uh, for that while you are making the connection. You can simply uh, tune the particular connection like uh, previously you have uh, uh, requested for 10 features, but right now you are requesting for 11 features or 12 features. You can also do that. Uh, the same uh, connection will run for those features that you have added and it will get the data and the data will be available for the data scientist. That could be done. OK, and then the third question is now this is a the customer churn is kind of a universal use case. So yes, uh, I, I can apply it to any of the industries. Now for that, what are the things I need to change so that I can do it? So one is the, definitely the data, yes. but the feature store which I have created for say banks, banks customer churn or for say mm -hmm. telecom customer churn will be totally different as compared to a CPG, which is a consumer product uh, group, correct? Yes. So there I can uh, go on refining my feature store and then select the features which are related to only CPG and then apply or apply it over here. Uh, in that case, you can group your features. So if you feel that there are some mutual features which can be useful for uh, two different different domains, like uh, you have mentioned for customer chain in, in banking sector and also telecom sector, but you feel that uh, there are some features uh, which are mutual for these two uh, domains. You can group those features. You can use them for both the use cases. By grouping this feature, you can you can able to do that thing. Thanks, 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 thanks for clarifying. Yep, yep. Thank you, Nithi. Thank you, Vinay, for such an insightful session. I'm very sorry I was unable to unmute myself before. Uh, okay, no I pass worries. on this speech. Uh, I'll pass on the stage to the audience. If anybody else has any queries for Vinay, uh, we'll wait for 30 seconds or you can raise your hand and we'll move you to speaker. I believe there are no questions coming our way. If okay. you have any questions further down the day or any time in the future, please feel free to reach out to Vinay over his email. His email ID is vinay.namani at the rate ketonic.ai. Uh, we'll conclude the session now. Thank you, Vinay, for such an insightful session. We'll see everyone back again at the same time next Friday. We host our weekly demo series every Friday at 10 a.m. IST. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of the session.